Hey everyone, welcome back to another 31 Minute Podcast. Well, I talk about going with impulses all the time and I was training at the factory a little earlier, I haven't quite got into legs yet, and I said to Jack, Jack, let's do a podcast. So, hello. father and a son, and I, there's a couple, hello Jack. Hello. Hi. On camera this time? You're on camera, I was going to say there's a couple of reasons for that. Well, lots of people ask about you, mm. and lots of people know that you're my son, and on top of that... Um, People really don't know much about you. You're just a, a guy that seems to make all the, the stuff happen and, you know, we wouldn't be able to do any of this stuff without you. A bit behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But um, you've got like quite a, quite a, well, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. One, who you are, what you're doing. And then two, you've had a very bumpy life, especially with me as your dad. Yeah, it's been all over the place. It has. So what's off limits today, Jack? Nothing. Nothing at all? No, I'm quite open about everything that's yeah. happened. Like if somebody asks me, usually I'll just talk yeah. to them about it. But Do they often say how amazing your dad is? Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> it's usually the opposite. <laughs> so um, you're 23 years old. Yeah. Yep. And you, you, you chose video. I have to say, ever since you were a kid, um, I used to, when you were eight years old, I think, and you used to video your brother. So let's talk about that, actually. How many brothers and sisters do you have? Ten. Ten. All together, wanted, half siblings. Want to talk about how they work? Uh, yeah, so there's Jackson, Paris, Phoenix, Logan. That's the top four who was you and mum. And then there's Jet and Tiani, which is mum and Richie. Flora Bay. So just, just yep, yep, wait one sec. So there's me and your mum. Yep, had four. So, yep, and then uh, we sort of separated after Phoenix, yep. which is your third brother. Yeah, the third one. Brother, the third you, oldest. girl, and then Phoenix is a brother, so yep. third kid. And then I went out one night on a bit of a bender, I must admit. Yeah. And then this is 20 years ago. Mm. And I rang your mum and said, come over. And then Logan came, came. over. And then Logan was, <laughs> Logan came around and I'm like, what the hell am I going to do now? Because we weren't together. Yeah. So that's four with your mum. Yeah. And then you, there's Jet and Tianu, which yeah. you just said. Which was mum and Richie. Which is your mum's second, second husband. husband. Yeah. She was with him for like 10 plus years yeah a long time quite like richie he's a good guy good guy and um but it was all a very, very messy time yeah it was like you know juggling kids everywhere everyone's parents are young i was trying to even just survive and i know richie was the same mm. uh, we've become quite good friends richie and i yeah he's good i've seen him a few times since. yeah very very, very strong uh, committed guy and then and then there's um Flora and Bay, which was you and Shelley. So that's my next wife. That's the next wife. That's Flora and Bay. And Flora is 11 now. Bay is nine, I think. Yeah, yeah nine. And then um, Shelley and I, we got divorced maybe. We were together for about 16 years mm. and then we got divorced. Yeah. And then there is Jordan and Emerson, which is Kieran's kids that he had prior to coming up, so they're like half or step siblings or whatever. Yeah. So there's like so many. I hate explaining it to people. <laughs> so there's a lot, isn't there? A lot of kids. So you're the eldest out of all of it. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm remarried mm -hmm. and your mum's remarried. Yeah. Yep. To Kieran and you're with Tara. That's right. You live with me. Yeah. Um, so, and that's been a whole journey in itself. So yeah. you, were, you, were, um, you were coming to my place half the week, every week when I was with Shelley for your entire life up until about year seven. Yeah. And then you didn't want to come anymore. Yeah. So well, I don't, I don't really even have much recollection of like that whole time of my life. It no, was, you didn't. It was so like all over the place and yeah. like school, no school and you know, didn't really yeah. know what was going on. You got to year 10 and then you're just like, I don't want to go to school anymore either. Yeah. Then you went through this whole rebellious stage and then you went down the drugs path. You went down yeah. the, like you, we stopped talking. Uh, actually you worked, you worked, for me, yeah. When you were about, well, from school, yeah. And then I had to sack you. I pretty much did nothing. <laughs> I had to sack you. You were the worst employee I've ever had in my I mean, life. I used to wait outside of the petrol station, like texting you, going, "Where's my pay? Where's yeah. my pay?" And like, as soon as I get paid, just go buy cigarettes. Like it was yeah. so bad. I just, I think back and I, you, you do like I do a photo shoot and wouldn't send you the photos for three weeks, and it was yeah, like, it was yeah, the worst. It was really I'd, bad. I'd say. Jack can do this, like we do a job and then you just wouldn't send the things through and whatever and it was, it was so bad. Anyway, I had to sack you and then we stopped talking. Yeah. For, for two years. Yeah. And then in those two years, you became a drug addict, you became an alcoholic, you became 
every everything, and you look completely different from. You yeah, know. I hate seeing photos. I don't hate seeing photos of myself from there, but I literally looked like like you said it on the last one. Like I looked caught out of a garbage bin. You did. I was like skinny, <laughs> you fat. Looked, you looked angry. Yeah, angry, pale, yep. shaved head. Like I used to paint my fingernails black. It was like. But in in your defence, part of that, like not only like we were pretty structured at our house, mm. but maybe a bit too structured. I think I think it was because you were so structured and Mum was so unstructured. It was like yeah, you, you, you obviously from, when you're younger you want to go to the unstructured side and just do all that. And yeah. when you come to dad, he's like, do this and that. You just don't want to listen. Yeah, and I, I think I was a bit emotionally tough as well. Like I, you I were, I, uh, you yeah. are still. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah. But I was, I was a bit like not very warm. Like yeah, very like do this, do that. Like what I was, my way of being warm is providing. Mm. You know, and and then but I was not like. Your mum's a cuddler. I'm not a cuddler. Yeah. But your mum also has no rules, and I had lots, lots of rules. So yeah. It's like different. There was like different rules. Like yeah. you would let us ride our bikes to Woi Woi from Kilcare, but yeah. mum wouldn't let us be out after seven o'clock. Yeah. But it, mum would. Let, it was just there was like so opposite. Yeah. I'd have all your lunches packed, but your mum would be like, "Oh, I just get whatever." Yeah. From grab something from it's the pantry. It's just so different. So yeah. you didn't have any consistency, is what I'm saying. Mm. Um, and then, then it was a pretty tricky because you didn't want to come to our house. And then I got a call from your nan one day and your mum decided that she wanted to take off and go with a new husband. Yeah, go to Sydney. And then left you up here, left all your kids up here. Mm. And I, so I took two of them. Yeah. Because I, I was working a lot. And then I said to your nan, what the hell does that mean? Mm. She's like, you're just going to have to deal with it. And I'm like, what, <laughs> is, what, do, what do you mean? Because yeah. I, I had a life in a bit of a rhythm where it was like half the week every week. Mm. I could sort of manage that just. And then, um, so I took Logan and Phoenix. Yeah. And I moved into a two-bedroom apartment. In, in Gosford. In Gosford. And I, I slept on the lounge so Logan could have one of the rooms because it was a very messy time. Financially, yeah. physically, everything. And then you got shuffled off to your nans with Paris. And so you were used to being as, as six, a team of six. Yeah. But Jet and Tiano lived with you as well. So all of all of you six, and then you all got dispersed. Yeah, because so, your mum wanted to do her thing, and then so she went. Uh, the two little kids, Jet and Tiana, went to Richie's. Yeah, for a few years. You went to your nans. Logan and Phoenix came to mine, mm. and I remember sitting there going. I think I said to Tara, I said uh, they had a huge fight. Paris was over. They were playing Django, mm. and I think Paris lost it and just smashed the thing everywhere. And and I said, I looked at her, I said, oh, I don't think I can do this. <laughs> and she looked at me, she said, you, you've got to do it. What year was this? I like, I'm trying to like, do the timeline oh, in my head. probably like six years ago, seven years, oh, six years. I don't know, I don't yeah. know years. But mm. uh, I just remember sitting there going, what the hell, how am I supposed to do this full time? Anyway, so you went there. Yeah. And then um, we didn't talk. Like I, We haven't talked a few times. <laughs> we haven't talked a few times. You were just so hell bent on doing your thing. Yeah. And the, the more you wanted to be that i just was getting more annoyed mm. um then you went to bali yeah it went to bali for schoolies yeah that was and you OD'd. Bad time. yeah i did on xanax it was yeah. oh, i was probably jackson no that's what it was jackson <laughs> please <laughs> more just, than xanax it was a, yeah it was you, a bunch you of were stuff. in hospital dead on the table yeah it was um it was pretty rough it was i think but i didn't even really i cared back then but it was so like it's like life was like a dream sort of like yeah. i can't even it was, it was the messiest 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 any, yeah Probably anyone I've ever heard yeah. as a family. It was so bad. Yeah. And then, so I heard you OD'd. I got a call. And then I flew to, it was when the volcano was going off. Yeah, you like so flew. I flew to the other side of Indonesia, whatever mm. that, where that is. And I, I just had no idea about Indonesia. So I, I was, <laughs> yeah. all I was like, and we hadn't spoken. I was like, I'm going to go get him. And everyone was like, you can't get there. The volcano's mm. there. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to go get him. So I flew to the other side and then I just got, I paid a guy in a car mm. to drive me to the other side of Indonesia, which took 12 hours. How much did you pay? If, I had no idea. I just did whatever. I'm living in and a mansion then, now. Because I couldn't um, fly into um, where you were. Yeah, Dem Dem Dempasar. Dempasar. I had to go to the other one. So, and then, was it Jakarta? That yeah, Jakarta. Yeah. And I'd never been to Bali before, but the car ride was probably the worst thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> yeah. Like I didn't realise how they drove, but across the whole country. Yeah. So I just sat there in the back seat, the husband and wife are just talking to each other the whole time and I'm just there going, my goodness, what have I got myself into? <laughs> and then I got to the hospital or got, no, got to the unit where you, the I don't know where you were and then got you, flew you back. Yeah. And then come back home. Went to rehab once I got You home. went to rehab. Yeah. 
Um, and then you ended up a bit later again in hospital. Yeah, re- rehab didn't really do anything. No, it was like no. it was a bit of a holiday sort of thing. It yep. was just like smoking cigarettes and yeah, I just was met a bunch of other drug addicts, and then yeah, when it, I went no and worked for a drug addict after that, and yep. it was like I had to get out of there. And I was in a few bad relationships, and yep. that made it worse. And then, um, yeah, it was it was a pretty messy time. It was like yeah. a really messy time. Uh, the wor- the worst part was when you went you were in hospital again with. Big cuts down your wrist. Yeah, that was no on my hand. Uh, it was on your wrist. Yeah, Don't, was, I know. No, where it was, was here. Look, I've got the scar. It's yeah, right anyway, there. it was no, no good. Yeah, I was and, on Christmas. And you that was on Christmas your, Eve. Hands in the air, all tied up, and then it was um, your brother Logan just broke down mm. like massively, and it was that. That was the time I was like, I've got to try and pull this whole thing together. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't very good. So you know, I'm just trying not to breathe into the microphone. I can hear myself. Okay. <laughs> I can hear myself breathing. <laughs> So what? What about what did what did you do from there? So we, you got out of hospital, yeah. and then at some point you decided to turn things around for yourself. It was when, like when was I that? sort of that turned it around. I just stopped. I stopped smoking like as much weed, and I stopped taking drugs. But I got fat, so I was in another relationship after that first one, and I just got comfortable, like too comfortable. I got lazy, didn't train, was eating so much macas and KFC, and was working a dead end job that I didn't like. It was like I was doing sa- I was doing door knocking sales, but it was for roller shutters and stuff like that. And then I hated that job, so I went and started doing um, what was it? Uh, smoke alarms. And then it was literally like just monkey work. I hated it. And then did that for like two, three years. So unhappy. So f- I tried to get fit a few times, but it wasn't really working. Mm. And then me and that girl broke up. And we were talking a little bit, but like I was kind of still doing my thing and just whatever. And then that's when Brock, Brock just didn't, what, he, he quit or whatever. Yeah. Brock wanted to go pursue his thing. Yeah. And then a uh, job opportunity and I think happened. We started talking again by then. We, we were talking. We were hanging out, but it was like a bit like yeah. I was still. I think you made the first approach, didn't you? I think so. I think so. we're both pretty stubborn. I, I can't really remember. It was like. Yeah, I can't remember either. It would have been two years ago ish yeah. now. And um, yeah, I just looked awful, like you just did. pale white. I had like shaved, like really short hair, big round face, and yeah. really overweight. And then um, I used to talk like a yobbo, like really bad as well. You couldn't understand what I was saying. You didn't. Yeah, you used to, I, I used to say, say to you, "Why do you talk like that?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, my, yeah, my, yeah, I was just, oh, mate, nothing like that. You know, it blah, was blah. the worst. And I'd be like, Jackson, why are you talking like that? Yeah, it, it, was, just, it, it was like it was so bad. Uh, and then, you, but the thing I've to- talked to you about told you your whole life you become like who you hang around who you hang around uh, yeah. it was just the circle i was around back then i think and then um and then yeah i i remember after that last break i was just i was drinking every day really heavily like almost a case a night and i was like so depressed and i was like why am i depressed and it's like oh because you're drinking every day and then i just i made the decision that i wanted to start training and i started getting my life on track a bit more i got a job here with you and haven't really looked back since. Mate, you're doing so well. Yeah, lost a lot of you're weight since then. You're incredibly well. You look great. You're a great young man. I know you have a few run-ins every now and then with Tara, but that's just yeah. she's a perfectionist. I think everyone does. Yeah. Everyone has some run-ins with Tara. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, she's, she, her, her standards are pretty high with things, and we're boys, so we yeah. don't uh, even I don't match them. It's good, though. Tara's good to be around. It is good, yeah. It is. You're, Jackson, you, you're doing phenomenally, so very proud of you. So um, where to now for you? Like, you... You're finding your stride now. Yeah, I just and, I and was bite. it hard? Was it hard turning? Sorry, was it hard turning yourself around from a lot of young people might be listening to this and, you know, they still might be drinking, they still might mm. be doing lines, they still might be smoking weed. And was it hard to get off of that? It's still hard now. Like it's, I'm not perfect now. I've still gone out a couple of times, but I, th- I think it, it gets easy. It's like you, you say all the time, it's like a muscle. So at the start, it's like you'd stop for a week and then the week after you do it again and then you stop for two weeks and then it just slowly gets better and easier and easier and easier. Yeah. And after that last time I went out a few weeks ago, it's like the next day it was the worst. Didn't I walk into your room and start, you did, you walked into my start room yelling out? No, I usually thought it was the toilet. I avoid you at all costs whenever I go out. Yeah. And then I was like, so what are you doing? And you're like, huh, huh. <laughs> <laughs> So you, you have relapsed, not relapsed, you have gone out a couple of times. Yeah. And do you think you're at the point now where you won't touch it I just again don't or? want to. It's like, because usually... Even like Sarah, but she's got a Christmas party or something coming up. She never yeah. goes out. Usually, oh, I'm like, oh, party! Like, yeah, let's go drink and meet mm. random people. I'm like, I didn't even really want to go, but I'll go. I'm not going to drink. I'll just meet her friends or whatever, and then go home after. So you, you said before you got onto this podcast, mm. you said, "Isn't it funny, Dad, that when you're 
you know, off track doing all that, you don't really value life that much. Yeah. But now you don't want to ever die because life's going so good. Yeah, it's it's, it's true. I remember yeah. always thinking like, I, was, I don't care. I could die tomorrow. And it's like, I don't even really care. It's like, I'd be happy. But now I'm like, <laughs> now I'm like, oh, I want to buy- miss you. Yeah, I, I, I want to buy a house and mm. like- I, I like if, if I'm like the smallest bit sick, I'm like oh, I'm dying. Mm. I'm dying. I don't want to die. It's like, it's it's funny just how you we, value different things. Yeah, value heaps mm. different things. And all it took was like a year and a half, two years of just training and eating right, and mm. slowly just starting to enjoy life. You say it all the time. It's like being high without being high. Yeah, it is. So yeah. so on that note, sometimes people write to us like, oh yeah, this and that. All these comments about well. For a start, can you clarify? I don't take Botox. Can you tell yeah, people? No. <laughs> <laughs> but what is it? So is this is this with the shiny shiny hair? Yeah, because because people like sometimes like, <laughs> oh yeah, good on you, you Botox and whatever. But I don't take Botox. No, nah, and you can confirm yeah. this. <laughs> See, look, but I do put this hydrogel on, and it makes my skin shiny. Yeah, and it looks like I do. I've had cheek fillers twice. About three years ago, I went and got them because someone said, "Cause see these lines." Mm. This has got nothing to do with it. <laughs> I just want to clarify this. See these lines. My dad had them really badly, like real deep. I didn't like them. Mm. And I see them and I'm like, I went to the guy and I'm like, what, what do you reckon I can do with this? Anything? Because I don't want to like start doing too much. You've got to keep doing it. And then I don't want to look like frozen face old man mm. one day. Like it's, so uh, he, like, he goes, I'll put cheek fillers in here. And they just made lumps there really. They're gone now. But I did that twice, hoping that these would go a bit less, but. Mm. Um, but I definitely don't take Botox. No, uh, with the amount of lighting things we've tried, just because yeah. it's just you I just have the sh- and I put fake tan on every day. I've done it for about thirty years. Yeah, every day on my face. Otherwise, I look like I don't know a bit white freckly faced. Yeah, we've I've literally got, got the latest like softbox technology lights to, yeah. to not make your head shiny, <laughs> and it still makes it. I shiny. still make it shiny. So yeah. just to clarify that. Yeah. Um. And so, so what are you going to do, like, moving forward? Like, where, where are you going? Um, how you, you're 18 months away from buying a house. I'm just, now. I'm pretty content with how mm. it's going. It's like sometimes, like last night, everyone went out and sort of that. I used to you get... still get fear of missing out? Sort of, not really. Like, it's not as bad. It's like, I just played Xbox with another mate of mine and went could to bed. Be, what could be better than hanging out home with <laughs> me and Tara? <laughs> yeah, well, honestly. No, it's, it's true, though. It's like, yeah. I don't even, like, the thought of going out and it's like, I've got, I've got to, it's not like I'm going out to get girls or whatever. I get it if you're single, but... It's like even then, it's the next day. It's like after I went out that time, it's like all my mates were fine. They were like, nah, like I felt good. I felt fine. I literally thought I was going to die. I was mm. like in the shower, like in the fetal position. I've never felt, I just don't want to, I don't want that headache mm. again all day. It took mm. me like a, a whole week, week and a half to yeah. I've been there many kind times. of get back in the groove. Even when we were filming, you were like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like you're usually on to it. One day I yeah. said, Jack, you're too scattered. Yeah, I go, couldn't even get home. the camera angles yeah, or it was like, the place. it was so bad. And all, all I'm thinking about really is just, buying a house yeah like that's all i've kind of got in my mind because i just want to have that own independence and sarah my girlfriend she's got her own place already yeah so it's like i kind of feel like oh it's like a bit behind yeah well, she's 21 <laughs> and she's got her, got her own place You'll and it's there. like she You'll doesn't come over to our place because it's like oh come to my room it's yeah. like, <laughs> doesn't sound right so um what, what come to my room <laughs> yeah it's like yeah let's go to my room I think you had sex yet but no <laughs> <laughs> i was just mean even hanging out in the, in the room um so what's it like with me as a dad what 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 um, people write stuff all the time. Oh yeah, you don't do this, or this is all just. What do you? What did one guy write this morning? Um, I'll give you a microphone. You think you're a guru? Yeah, or something like yeah, you something like you that. Think you're a guru. Like, what, what's it like with that? Like, um, um, honestly, it was tough yeah, for you a can long. Say what you want, Jack. Was, you're not going to get a smack. No, <laughs> <laughs> it was tough for a long time. It's like even people now, like it's if we're doing work, like now, like we're, it's working to, on eight forty four on a Sunday. We've been working for like the last two hours today. Yeah, people will be like, "You're crazy for doing that," but it's like I've kind of, I think you just have to learn how to deal with you, sort of thing. Like yeah. you just have to know when to leave. You it. Can like say like, what you want. Like Jack. last night, for instance. Like you were yeah, sick. last night. Yeah, I walked out you're to get some freaking pain, no, Jackson. I, I, I didn't every know. time, <laughs> every time. I didn't know you were down there. And every I, time I walk in the kitchen, you just have to walk down in there. Well, that's why I pretended to put my jumper outside because it's like <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna pretend I'm doing something so he doesn't go. What are you doing down here? And then I was gonna walk up and you go, What are you doing? You're like, are you gonna make food? I was like, oh, I was going to. And you're like, Leave me alone. <laughs> I need space. And I'm like, I know. That's why I didn't go to the pantry. I pretended. I oh, took my jumper off. Sick as yesterday, yeah, and I you know. just happened to come, and I just went, "What the hell? Do you have to come now? You're playing your video game. Yeah. You just come out now." Well, it's like it's like Archie. Like Archie's a good dog now because over time he's, he's a good le- dog. Yeah, he's well, your dog. It's because over time he's learnt like to when to, what to do and when to do things. It's sort of like that. It's like you just got to kind of 
read without being told. <laughs> like you kind of got to read your mind a little bit. Yeah, but it's it's good. I'm getting the groove now. But we sort of live what we're talking about. Oh, we yeah, for sure, a hundred percent. Most of the time, apart when from when I'm yelling at you. Yeah, no, well, yeah. even even then, compared to ten years ago, or ten years ago, five years ago, it was like mm. you're a completely different person. Mm. You used to be like full. Like silverback gorilla. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was. I thought the way to because I grew up in a weird way, and I, I thought the way to rule was a bit of intimidation. I guess I guess you'd say I don't mm. know. Like do that, do that a little bit. I don't yeah, know. it's Hard a lot better now. It's used good. To smack you a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone used to get smacked. Yeah, I think did. it's a good thing. Well, then again, look how half the kids have turned out. So. Yeah, I know. I know. So that's a whole other story. Um, and then if someone, if a young person is struggling right now with life or with um, uh, life. Drugs, drinking, like what? What would you say to them? Um, don't blame anything else besides yourself. It's like I mean, after New Year's last year, like that was like I went out and had this massive. Like I've caught a plane home uh, like two days early because I just I couldn't handle being there anymore. It was the worst. Went four months sober, and I, ever since then I've I have like gone out since then. But when I did that sober stint, I was like, oh, like this feels really good. And I just I stopped blaming other people and was like, what am I doing? Like, like I was drinking every day. I was doing all these things that were making me feel upset. And as soon as I switched it around, I felt better. Mm. It's like it's just it's not going to happen straight away. But so, do you think they need to have something bigger that they're shooting for, or do you? How, yeah, because sometimes people just feel a little a little lost. Like, yeah, I mean, you you have some people in uh, that you know that just choose drugs over anything else. Still. Mm. But like, do you think it's because they don't have anything else lighting them up? What is that? Yeah, from a young man's point of view, I just don't think. Well, I never did. I just I didn't care. I, all I wanted to do was like get the next bag or get a packet of cigarettes or this and that. And then when, once I started like realizing, oh, okay, I'm getting older now. I'm tw- I think I was 22, and I'm like, oh, what do, do I still want to be doing this at 24? It's like, what, what, what do I do to change it? And I'm lucky I've got you, and like I listen to you every day talk about it, so that's helped a lot. But when I um when I first made the switch, it was when after that last breakup and I was drinking every day, like constantly I'd, I'd drink from as soon as I finished to I drink until I couldn't walk anymore and just go to bed. And then I was like, why am I feeling so depressed? It's like, Oh, cause I'm drinking every day. So I'm, I just changed that and stopped drinking every day. And then you start finding these little things that make you feel better in the long run. And you just go, I, I think I was lucky. I was kind of lucky that I figured it out so young. Mm. Cause a lot of people don't, they just keep going. Even my mates and stuff now, like a lot of them still go out like every single weekend, like on the weekend they're all going, they're like, nah, like, I'm, yeah, I'm not, not going out. Time, yeah, they're like, I'm not going out this week, week, weekend. Let's just play COD and cruise all weekend. And it's like last night they all went out, which is cool. Like, whatever, they're young and having fun. But I've just, I've got different aspirations now than I did. And I think having people around me like Sarah, who has her own place, and you, who's like constantly feeding motivation into me every day, it's like I got lucky where I can see it now. But a lot of people don't catch it early. They catch it when it's a little bit too late and they're renting, stuck in like a rental property thing and they can't save and like they're not happy. And it's like, I think the younger you get it, the younger you like catch it and can see what you should do is, is it's the better is mm. better. Mm. Well, Jackson, I, I think that's enough for telling people who you are, what you are, have those given a little bit of insight, but I love you very much. I'm incredibly proud today. of you. Yeah. Very, very, very proud of you. Um, and let's, we'll do one of these every now and then and see how you're progressing. But I, I'd love to see when you buy your house. Well, I think we'll do a vlog on that one. Yeah, we'll do one. Once yeah. I buy my own place. I think you're on an amazing path. Stay on it, young man. Thanks, dad. Thanks.